Well, I got my diamond plate. Uh, been doing some measuring, thinking, and figuring, and uh, I got everything figured out, I believe. Now I'm starting to weld parts. I just weld this up. Wait, just kind of here waiting for it to cool down. It's pretty cool now. Well, maybe not. But got it welded up. Turned out pretty good. That'll be the part that actuates the brake. And I uh, got my cheap my, or got my diamond plate bent. The it's something they just just threw away at work, and I was like, hey, perfect timing. And that's about that's about it, I guess. Well, I can show you how how it's gonna work here on the bench. This will be the part that actuates the brake. And I uh, need my foot over here. I should turn that thing off. It should be cooled down. Where my leg. This is what this is what connects to the axle there, and it connects to the axle axle through this pushing. So it'll get welded here like that. And of course, when you push the pedal sets on top of this, so when you push down on it, it's going to turn it. So it'll go up under the pedal here. Set on it thusly, and these here, I'm gonna I'm gonna drill holes in this and actually bolt it. But these here, I might just I may just weld these into place where they need to be. Maybe I'll just use two uh, two rosette welds, I think you call them, button welds, spot welds, and then. But I want to bolt this because I want to be able to take this off so I can make it a lot easier to. To work on it and sand it if I don't weld them. So uh, that's that. Oh, I'm, I'm going to take my three-quarter inch rod that I got over there. I'm going to go, I'm going to go clear across. Actually, this here will go this way. That's my plan. Let's say that. Let's say if that goes there, just hypothetically speaking, that'll get welded like that. Clear, clear across. And that'll stiffen this up. That's the way the one at work was done. I figured, and why change it? So I'll just do the same thing. Just weld a piece of three quarter bar under there, and I'll just put some welds every, I don't know, four inches, about a half inch long or so, the whole way across there, and that'll stiffen that up. Um, the axle. My plan for it was to make a coupler here right here and then add another piece that went clear over to the other pillow block that isn't over there yet because I I didn't know you know you, you I wasn't sure if I could get it in there but then I got thinking I just thought about last night and walked down real quick and look get you fellas down here where you can see where it comes out on the inside here see it way back in there Come on, hand, hold the thing right, you know, right there. All I gotta do is this plate above my hand here. I just gotta raise it up a little bit, and then I'll be able to slide the whole thing in from this end. So I can make it one piece, which will make it stronger, and I got my hands. Every time I stick it in there, I get it stuck. But I'll just be able to undo this bolt, not here, and uh, just this plate, plate's on the hinge. Just pull it up and slide it right in there. And some of you might ask, why not just use a piece on each side and don't have an axle go clear across? Well, if you notice, most of the lathes, they have their axle going clear across. And that's because it just isn't as strong this way. It'll have movement. But if you run it clear across and hold it on both ends, then it'll be good and solid. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I think that's about it. So... Uh, I'll get to work welding that foot on that other piece. The leg or whatever you want to call it. This piece here. I gotta I gotta get this back on there. That's what I'm waiting for to cool down enough. Mark where this goes. Weld this into place. And then I have to make another one for the other side. Because originally originally I was planning on putting a sensor on the outside. So I only made I only made two of these up, one for each end. Well, then I ended up using two on the left side, one on the inside, one on the outside. 
which this is the outside one, one on the inside is our inner. Now I need one for this end. So I got to make me one more of them with a keyway in it. And that should be it. So I'll get this thing all welded up now and get it on there and I'll be able to show you a completely done other than paint job uh, break or at least break option. So anyways, see you in a few seconds and I'll add the rest of it onto this video. Well, as you can see, it's done. Just got to put the panels back on the machine. And uh, that'll be that. So let's fire it up and show you how it works. Uh, let's start out back here. Stop. Let's see if I get my foot in here. Let's. Let's speed it up some. And put it in high gear. Direct drive. And if I can get it, there it went. All right, now let's. And stop. Speed it up. how long it takes to spin down without the brake. There's the brake. And of course, if, if I'm uh, just walking away from the machine and don't want to use the brake, I just want to shut it off. I can just move out a little bit. And that never, that never hit the brake. Show you that here in a minute. Turn this noisy thing off. Of course, uh, I guess we'll sum up everything. Come back in here. There's the the switch that turns it on and off. When you push pushing that pedal, that bar there moves. Goes across that prop switch. There's how the lines are run for the brake right there. Here's the brake mechanism. The rotor and the uh, caliper. That worked pretty good. Of course, over here is all the these goodies. There's the master cylinder, and that's how that works. Push down the pedal, and of course, there's no brake. It just disengages the motor, and then there's the brake. Springs pulling it back up, and that stops here. Same thing on the other side. So, uh, as you can see how I made the arms here to come out. It's kind of a pain getting them welded on there because this side wasn't so bad because I had that short piece of shaft. So I used it to get this side right. But then once I went to the other side, I had to use this shaft, which means I had to un undo everything in there and out here and slide it all the way through and then slide this on and figure out where I need it, mark it, and then I had to undo everything so I could slide the shaft back enough to get that back off of there so I could get it on the bench and weld it or at least heavy tack it and put it back and see if it was right and that took about three tries to get that thing right. Get it level and everything, get it timed with the other one. Of course I had to put had to put these on there because uh, the only thing that was stopping it, when you push down the pedal and let go, it was actually jerking down on that master cylinder clevis there, which, of course, that ain't meant to go that way, so I was afraid it was going to break something, so I put the, put the, made them up, just got done then, put them on there. These hooks for the springs, just regular off-the-shelf quarter 20 hooks. And, of course, to set the tension on the spring, I just simply put one on there by itself, put this hook on the bottom, and then I just held up on the spring until it was enough pressure to uh, hold the pedal up with one, and then I marked the location where it went and just drilled it there and then 
you know, off of measurements to put the other one the same way. So I figured if one would by itself would hold it, then uh, two together would definitely hold it. Uh, the height. Oh, I think I made it five inches, I believe. I don't know why it's so hard to pull a tape measure out one-handed. You'd be surprised. Yeah, it's five inches. Thereabouts. The one at work was like seven and a half that I use, and I thought, man, that's just too much. So I kind of was on the fence for a while and finally ended up figuring five. But five's plenty because you can get your foot under there. Now, I will admit the lady that work is higher. So maybe they made it so high in case you wanted to put a little bit of a platform here, maybe. I don't know. Um, of course, I did bolt it. I said about welding it on there, or at least weld it to the angle iron that's underneath. But I decided, you know, when it comes time to paint this thing, it's going to be a lot easier to be able to unbolt this. And, to paint it. Of course I had to spot face it because of the diamonds. You can see it's a little bigger. I just took a one inch spot. No, it's a, it's a seven eight spot face or just end mill made spots on there. Which I wish I'd have thought of that before I bent it because it, it's kind of hard holding this. I had to clamp it down to the table. If it, if it wouldn't have had this bend on it, I could have just stuck it in the vise and did it a lot easier. Uh, let's look underneath. There you can see there's the angle iron. These are carriage bolts here. And it's just simply bolted and then bolted over here. And then here you can see the quarter rod I used end to end to uh, stiffen it up. And that's just, that's actually left over from this right here. I bought a six foot piece and I didn't need near that much. And the, re the what was left over was enough to, to do that. So, uh, Anyways, I think that's just about the, the gist of everything. So I guess that ends that project. So now I can get concentrating on that saddle to see how to, if I can figure out how to uh, route the lines. The main thing is just routing the lines to get oil to it. I want to get oil to the, uh, the saddle and to the cross slide. So anyways... Thanks for watching, and I uh, hope this helps somebody. Someday, maybe somebody's going to put a brake on their lathe, even if it ain't the same lathe. It'll give them some ideas how to do it. I mean, I I got some ideas off the lathe at work and had to figure the other rest of it out myself. So, a lot of fun. It works good, and I'm happy with it. Anyways, thanks for watching.